Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic edition of the His and Her Money Show, where we make it our business to help you take dominion over your money and your life. And we're going to continue that effort with today's episode. So get ready because you're going to hear an incredible, inspiring story that's going to surely put you on the path to hitting your financial goals. Once you hear what this young lady was able to do, you're going to have to look in the mirror and be like, man, if, if, if she did that then what the heck is holding me back? And you'll find that the answer is absolutely nothing. We're going to be talking to none other than Jade Warshaw, who is one of the personalities over at Ramsey Solutions. And she has an incredible story of walking her way, her and her husband out of almost half a million dollars, million dollars worth of debt. So please get your pen and paper ready. I hope I got your attention now. Uh, because you're going to you're, you're going to be motivated by this story. And for us, you know, we don't present these episodes for entertainment value. We want you to be equipped to go and create your own story. So get ready to get motivated and pay attention and maybe even create a plan of attack for yourself. So let's go get Jade on so we can hear all about her incredible story. Hey, Jade, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Wow. Thank you so much for having me. This is a great honor. Thank you. We are honored to have you because your story, wow, um, is incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible. Almost half a million dollars you and your husband paid off. So we're going to dig into all of that in just a moment. But some people are being introduced to you for the first time right here and right now. So for them, can you say hello and then kind of let them know what you're all about? Oh, yeah, most definitely. So, hey, guys, uh, I'm Jade Warshaw. I am a money coach um, here at Ramsey Solutions. That has not always been the case. My background is actually in entertainment, uh, professional vocalist, entertainer for the last 15 years, and kind of earned my education in personal finance through my own story, uh, trudging our way with my husband out of, uh, as Talit said, almost $500,000 of debt, $460,000 to be exact. And look, it was a school of hard knocks. And that's kind of how we learned the best ways to handle money, the principles surrounding money. And most importantly, probably for the folks listening, how to get out, right? How to get out of debt. If you find yourself uh, facing a mountain of debt, hopefully you'll get some tips on how to get out of that today. All right. So let's let's go back to the beginning of this. We we know that you made it out, which is incredible. And I know everybody wants the details as to what you and Sam did. But let's go back to the beginning. Um, what type of debt was this? Total was four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So, A, talk about the type of debt you were facing. And then B, how long did it take you all to start to finish to get all of this debt out of your life? So coming out of college, we got married one week after graduation And starting to look through our finances and lay it out, we realized, crap, we got a lot of debt. Most of it was student loans, uh, Talit, $280,000 student loan debt, Um, most of it coming from my husband's side. I had $34,000 to $35,000, and my husband, who had gone to Berkeley College of Music, one of the most expensive music schools in the country, um, started there, then went to another out-of-state school, Tennessee State University, which is my alma mater as well. Um, and you know, that out of state tuition, those private schools, that junk adds up. Plus the fact, you know, you, when you go out, when you come out of school, most of us don't immediately start paying our student loans, right? We put them on a brief forbearance or, you know, we're just trying to get set up with our job, right? We're trying to get a career. Um, and we did that. That's, you know, typical move is let me, let me put this on forbearance for a minute. Well, I have a, a financial hardship. Let me put it on deferment for a while. And, all the while that interest is stacking up. And so what started out as less became 280,000 of student loans. Then of course we had two cars we couldn't afford. Uh, We had an H3 Hummer, I had a Jeep. Uh, My husband at the time did have a a small townhouse. It was worth about uh, just under a hundred thousand. I think Um, we sold that and broke out you know, even on that because it was 2009 when we sold it. And you know, the great recession wasn't helping anybody out. And then of course, credit cards, lots of credit card debt, store cards, Firestone, uh, Guitar Center, all the credit cards, store cards that you can think of, just really normal. Uh, What I would call the type of debt when you come up with no real 
education surrounding personal finance, right? You just, you do what you think you're supposed to do. You do what you see everybody else doing. You take out the student loans. Oh, that's going to ROI, right? You know, you take out the credit cards to make ends meet and you need a car, right? So you get a car note. And so it, 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 it took a while for us to realize, man, we, we made a lot of mistakes thinking we were doing the right thing and forgiving ourselves for that. Let's talk about the mentality that you all possessed at that time. Okay. Cause y'all, y'all got married a week after graduation. Okay. Um, uh, um, you ain't gonna get no Honda Civic. No, 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 no. We went and got an H two. Okay. Uh, and then we got a Jeep on top of that and a townhouse. So what, um, what was your money mindset? How were you raised around money? Because, um, it seemed like y'all was going for it. We were going hard in the paint. Look, I the way I grew up was scarcity. There was there was scarcity surrounding money. Here's the thing: my parents, great people, you know, those folks who do they do the best they can. But when it came to money, they just didn't have all the tools. And so as a result, although both of my parents had great jobs, right? They were hard workers. We constantly found ourselves in that paycheck to paycheck cycle. Things that should have been easy to get felt like a strain, right? The budget, the money always felt like a strain. So coming out of that, I, and and then coming out of, you know, college and I'm starting my new life. I think that I just wanted to feel this feeling of, I can get the things I want to get and I can live the life I want to live. And I don't want to feel stress around money. I don't want people telling me, no, I don't want, do you know what I'm saying? And so you kind of go, you think you're going in the direction of freedom, but because there's pain around that and there's trauma surrounding that, having not healed, you do the things that end up getting you back in that same situation that you were trying to avoid. And so that's my side of it. And I think my husband, if he were here, he would probably say something similar. Um, You know, his family grew up, they were not, you know, very lower middle class. And, you know, you think his mom always said, hey, you got to get a credit score. So when you get a credit card, that's that's how you build your credit score. And so we were both working on these broken models of how to how to get ahead, um, how to manage your money. No one was talking about building wealth, right? It was just managing your money from month to month and getting the things that you want, right? There's no real vision around it other than that. And I think that's what got us into trouble. And what um, what was that feeling like when you all sat down, started adding up your situation? Because I would imagine, you know, I we've been through this same exercise. Our total wasn't four hundred and sixty thousand. When you put all the numbers in the calculator, and at the end you hit the enter button, you said four hundred and. Like, what did that do to you to see that number? Did it freak you out? Like, talk to us because some people are are going to listen to this because they kind of know how much debt they're in. But now listening to your story and one of the things that was key for you all was knowing exactly what your situation was. And they're going to go and do that same exercise and they're going to hit the enter button and they're going to see a particular number. How did you handle that number when you saw it for the first time? Um. It wasn't easy. Um, And that's, (laughs) if anybody takes anything away from what I say, I'm a happy person. I'm a bubbly person. I'm going to encourage you, but never get it twisted. It's not easy. Um, There is some real reckoning that you do with yourself. Um, Sitting down with my husband, really looking at the numbers. I'll be honest. It took several conversations to get to the bottom of it. Because you all know, if you're married, you come in and you've got your finances and they've got their finances. And it's a process of revealing, right? It's a process to show, okay, here's my credit card debt. Here's my bank account balance. Here's this and that. And so honestly, it took a while, uh, Talit, for us to really show everything. Because I remember at one point, it was just a matter of, hey, I asked Sam, Sam is my husband. I said, hey, how much student loan do you actually, how, how much student loan debt do you actually have? And it was like, oh, I think it's like 120. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Then I would see a bill and I'd be like, I feel like this is more. And so I'd ask again, I'd say, hey, you said it was 120, but I feel like I'm looking at this and it's for sure, you know? And then it was like, oh yeah. So it was a while before what I realized was he was just guessing. He had not logged on 
pulled up all the websites, Navient, Sally Mae, ACS. He had not looked at that because it's the monster in the closet, right? It's, you know, something's back there and you know, it's ugly, but you don't want to pull open the door and really see what it is. And so finally I said to him, look, I need to know, and you need to know. And I think he had realized, I think he knew, okay, when I pulled out these loans, it was about 120 um, for that one. But time has passed and something tells me this is a lot scarier and I don't want to look at it. And so that's really, I think what a lot of people are dealing with is looking at the reality. And so finally, when we got the numbers, there's a lot of shame there. Uh, A lot of, it was mostly shame because it was like, how did this happen? Right. And then we're musicians on top of it. Neither of of us were making a good income. I mean, at the time combined, we were making 30,000. So I think my husband probably more so than I was dealing with this thing of like, dude, I'm supposed to be the man. Like I'm supposed to be doing this thing. And instead I got my girl and our family in this mountain of debt. And so that was a big, uh, that was the hardest part dealing with that and him understanding that I get it. Like I'm on board with you. Like we're ride or die. I'm not mad at you. I'm not judging you. I chose you. And now this is just our journey. And that's the way it is. It was hard for him to accept that I was accepting him. Yeah. Been there. I'm, I am Sam. Uh, every, every bit of debt that we had in our marriage came from me. She was debt free until she took my last name. And um, we went on that journey together. And it's not easy when you know that the decisions you made way back when is having a current effect on your ability to lead your household presently. Can you talk to, because a lot of people listening right now are married. Um, Internally, after you digested everything, several conversations, now we know the number. How'd you get to that space of being, uh, I chose you, we're going to do this together. I'm not mad at you because some people will be mad. Yeah. Uh, Jade, Jade, some people be mad. Okay. <laughs> you, I think. You, 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 we going to be, we going to be real on the his or her money show. So, people okay. be okay. so how, what, what was going on internally? And then what were you vocalizing to Sam uh, um, yeah. to help him move out of shame and you all come up with a plan of attack to move forward together? You know, um, Again, it goes back to that childhood stuff. For me, it was going, I saw money get between people. I saw money cause barriers and rifts in relationships. I saw it cause fights. I saw it cause all sorts of things um, between spouse to spouse and on down to the kids. And that for me was just, it can't happen. It could not happen like that in my own marriage. And so I think that's for once, I had the right instinct. And instead of running from, I ran to him. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't give myself much credit for that. I think so much of what we do is instinctual and we're acting on just emotion or, again, like trauma response. And I think for me, it was like, oh, here's this big thing that has the ability. Here's this big money issue that has the ability to wreck my marriage. I saw what the impact could be. I refuse to have that happen. So I'm just like running at him probably with a weird amount of understanding. I'll just be honest. I I think I had a weird amount of, oh, it's cool. We'll do it. We can get through it. And I think sometimes, because Sam will say like, dude, you have, I remember during that time, because he was so worried that how are we going to live? How are we going to, and I was like, it's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll get through it almost to like a fault. Um, that he was like, Hey, like, this is real though. Like you do understand this is real though. And these are big numbers. Um, and so we just kind of were typecast in these roles. My husband, I mean, I remember I would see him, you know, in the morning you're sitting in the mirror, brushing your teeth and I would see him standing in the mirror, brushing his teeth. And I could just see his mind going like, he's the type he's constantly running numbers, constantly running through scenarios. And I see that happening silently in his mind. Meanwhile, I'm wa- brushing my teeth. I'm like, the Lord is going to provide. We're going to get through this. Do, 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 you know, just fine. And so I think during that time, I was just a little bit ignorance is bliss. And I'm going to make sure this doesn't come between my marriage. And then it wasn't until a couple of months into it that I started seeing, okay, having a good attitude is great, but there's some action, real, real action that's going to have to take place. And that's going to require both of us. And that's when we really got on, on a plan and got busy. Man, that's so good. And what what do you think was um, the impetus for 
mindset change. Because again, y'all came out the gate, 100 miles an hour, house, two cars, you know, doing your thing. Because you said that there was some stuff from childhood that you didn't recognize was affecting how you were moving in adulthood. And then, um, you know, you all began this journey of realizing that maybe you need to do something differently, start looking at numbers. Um, you all had to change the way that you thought about money. How did you change the way that your brain worked when you thought about financial decisions, purchases, saving, investing, debt? Some people need a total mind shift change in order to in order for in order for your hand to hit the plow to do the work. It starts with what's going on between your ears. So, how did you all change the way that you thought about money? So I remember I was um, in the car with my brother um, taking a, a quick road trip and on the radio was this guy called Dave Ramsey and I'm listening to him talk about debt and how to manage your money. And this is common sense principles and, you know, budgeting and like all this stuff that I'm like, yeah, that seems right. Like I get it. And so I told my husband, I was like, Hey, we've got this mountain of debt. There's this guy, Dave Ramsey. Um, I think we need to go get his book. And so we go to Barnes and Noble, pick up the total money makeover and start reading. And I'll be honest at first reading it, it was like, this is great information. But at the same time, you realize how far away from good you are. <laughs> you realize just how bad your situation is. So it's like you feel good that you're reading it, but then you just feel terrible that you've made so many mistakes. And honestly, as I was reading it, it was striking so many chords because, you know, the book is full of stories, right? Real life people just giving their stories. And then it's in between the stories. It's OK. Here's the principle. Here's what you need to be doing. Here's the steps that you need to walk. and. I'm a person who's pretty, um, I like discipline. I like goals. I like plans. So when you tell me, hey, here's seven steps that you can do to get your money right, I'm like, okay, let's do it. And for my husband and I, it was just a no brainer. We started. And I think the mindset shift happened um, not only reading the book, but continuing to stay plugged into the information. Um, the Ramsey Show, uh, which I'm a host of that show now, which is so crazy. Uh, we listened to that thing all the time. Um, at the time, we were traveling a lot for work. We were entertainers. And I would download all three hours because it's a three-hour show. And we would just listen to it. I'd go to the gym. I'd run on the treadmill. I'd listen to it. I'd be on the plane listening to it as much as I could. And, you know, when you have a mindset issue, right, when your belief is messed up, when your thoughts are messed up, when the only way to change that is through renewing your mind and through changing what you put into your mind. It's like whatever you feed grows, right? So if you're constantly feeding an old mentality, if you're constantly uh, listening to the wrong things, the wrong people, then that's what grows. You know, if your mom and them is always like, oh girl, you know, you, you're you not gonna get out of debt. You gonna die with that debt. You know, you if you listen to that all the time, um, that's what you're gonna believe. But by listening to that show, by reading those books, I started hearing people every day tell me, we got out of debt. We were able to cut up our credit cards. We were able to pay off our student loans. You know, you can still have a small business in America today. I was hearing all of these things and not just hearing it, but seeing real examples of it. And it's like, okay, after a while, my mind started to change. And I, I realized I had some messed up beliefs about money and about my own self. My confidence wasn't there, but that started to grow as well. So now let's move into tactical mode. You all had the talks. You all did the calculations, read the book listening to the, the show, it's time to get to work. Talk to us because on one hand of the equation, you got $460,000 worth of debt. On the other hand of the equation, y'all make $30,000 combined. I'm sorry, I, I know some people heard that was like, hold up, now, something missing, something, something is missing. How did she get out of $460,000 of debt on a $30,000 income? So let's talk about what you and your husband did to start your way out of debt. What happened first? So first year, you're right, 30K, and that's a problem. You got a big hole of debt, you need a big shovel, and we had a small shovel. So we knew that it was going to be a combination of two things that needed to happen. A, we needed to get on a budget and lower, because when you get on the budget, you see what your expenses are, and we needed to lower our expenses as low as they could possibly go. But that's not enough. Now you got to also increase your income so that you increase the amount of margin or extra money that you have every month to put towards debt. And so that's the combination that worked for us. And 
you know, at the time, like I said, we were entertainers. And so it was like, we got work like crazy. We have to do all the work that we can do in a 24 hour period. And so for us, it was a lot of travel because we worked on cruise lines. I mean, we were working 35, 40 weeks out of the year traveling all over God, you know, God's green earth, just everywhere, every country, um, spending a lot of time away from home. And then after a while, you know, we would kind of have, you know, you hit that point where it's kind of like, I think I've maxed out the amount of income I can make doing this. Um, and it was gradual. It was like, okay, we made 30,000. Then the next year we worked a little bit more, made 50,000. Then the next year made a little bit more, made 70,000 and on up to finally, we got to about 120. And I said to Sam, I was like, there's no more hours in the day. Like, what can we do? And so, and not to mention, we also wanted to start a family. And I was like, we can't work like this and have a family. So that's when we had the idea to start an entertainment business and a talent agency. And we thought, hey, we can duplicate ourselves and send other folks out to do the work and we can stay home and have a family. And so I think a lot of times in those cases, the necessity to really becomes the mother of invention, right? It's like, we've got to get out of debt. We, we've we got to start a family and your brain starts working to figure out how to actually do that. And so a lot of great ideas came out of that. And I'll be honest, uh, the first couple of business ideas we had failed. They failed miserably and they cost us some cash as well. Um, but we kept trying and we kept working through it. And, and finally, the right ideas hit and the right opportunities opened. And we were really able to increase our income. So we started at 30000 But the year that we paid off the debt, we made the most that we ever made, which was about 260000 that year. It was unbelievable. Um, almost all of it went to debt. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. I remember getting a doing a project and having about eighty thousand dollars in the bank and writing a check for eighty thousand dollars to ACS. And it was like I remember Sam took a picture of our account with the money in it because he was like, I know this money is about to be gone and I just want to know that it actually happened. <laughs> so he took a, a, a screenshot of it and that money went right out the door to ACS. And, but then it was the final thing that we paid off and we were free. And so I say all that to say that this is not a, it's not a rocket ship, man. It is like, you know, it's like that emoji or that meme where the guy's riding the bike and it's like super, you know, he's going uphill and he's falling in the pit and then he's getting back, you know, it is a jagged, rustic climb to the top and you just have to keep going. You have to put one foot in front of the other. And I can tell you before you know it, you'll look back and go, man, like we made it. And all the sacrifices will be totally worth it. I mean, we as married people got roommates and lived with folks to save on rent. And we sold all our furniture and sleep, slept on an air mattress for five years and just did whatever it took. I mean, I, I could just go on and on and it was totally worth it. And that's what I can tell people today. It's worth it. We sold our vehicles. We were on one vehicle family for 10 years because we were trying to save money, you know, and not pay for things. And it took us seven and a half years, but we paid off every cent of debt, never to go back again. Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you work so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit crushmymortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's crushmymortgage.com. Man, everybody's mad now because they thought it was magic. They thought, they thought you and Sam were magicians and that you all had this magic trick you did to be able to get rid of four hundred and sixty thousand. Now, then you start talking about, yeah, we started working more. 
and uh, we slept on an air mattress for five. Like you know, you gotta do these things out there. Like it wasn't no big deal. Uh, <laughs> we're married with roommates. Man, uh, we had one car. Um, <laughs> like these are some deep cuts to your lifestyle. These are some deep shifts to your mentality. All right, talk about the talks you're having when you're making such strong moves. You all <laughs> were doubling how much you were working, which means that you are also increasing time away from each other as a young married couple. You all were selling stuff left and right, furniture, one of the vehicles. Um, you let people move in with you. Come on, man. What are y'all, what are you and Sam saying to each other that's allowing you all to be able to make these types of sacrifices? Just focusing, you gotta focus on, you gotta keep your eyes on the prize. That's what you gotta do. For us, I had a very clear, um, I had a very clear visual in my head. And I know Sam had one too. And Sam used to say, um, I want to, I'm gonna be a millionaire before I'm 30. He used to say it all the time. And we weren't, let, let me be clear, we did not become millionaires before we were 30. But back then, because at least there was a goal, right? You at least have to have a goal. You know, I'm sure you've heard Zig Ziglar, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time, right? And so at least having that goal of, I, I want to build wealth, man. I, I want to be a young guy who's successful and has built wealth for his family. That's honestly what he was saying, right? So he had that in his head. And I had a total, complete other picture in my head. I had this vision of it being uh, me, us having kids and me walking my kid, leaving my house and walking my kid to el elementary school in the morning and then being there at two or three o'clock waiting outside and him coming and me walking him home. I don't know where that came from in my head, but something burned that image into my brain and I needed to make sure that that was going to happen. And with half a million dollars of debt, you don't have the freedom to be home at two or 3 PM, right? You don't have the ability to, at our, in our case, we, didn't, we couldn't afford kids. Like we were so far away from any of that, buying a house, having a house that I'm walking outside of to take this kid to school. None of it was there, but it existed in my mind. And so I think because both of us had a very clear picture, he was on board with my picture. I was on board with his picture. It was like, let's go get it. How do we make it happen? Um, and kind of to your point, Talit, um, luckily we worked together. Um, I'm a vocalist. My husband's a musical director. So luckily we worked together. However, let me just say, most folks do not spend as much time with their spouse as we spent together. And sometimes we just wanted to knock each other's heads off because it was like, Go go anywhere else. Go outside of my range of vision right now because you're getting on my nerves. Um, but at the end of the day, look, having that vision of what our life can be, having that vision of someday we're going to want to retire. And I don't want to work till I'm 65. I don't want to work till I'm 70. I don't even know if I want to work till I'm 60. I want to have freedom. I want to work because I want to, not because I need to, not because these debt collectors are breathing down my back, Right. And all of that was fuel for us to, to do what we needed to do. Short-term sacrifice, long-term game. That's what it equals out to. I love it. I love it. And I also love the fact that you all, which is near and dear to our heart, is that part of your journey was becoming entrepreneurs. Some people, I think, think that it's kind of either or. I'll get to that. Right now, I got to focus on getting out of debt. Right now, I got to focus on getting my emergency fund up. Right now, I got to focus on getting my investors up. And then I'll try this whole entrepreneurship thing. But you all saw it as a key component to hitting your goals. Now, you had to be strategic, I'm sure. So I want to talk about how did you all decide how to approach, right? Because you all are in full grind mode. You all are, are working every hour that you possibly can. You all are making cuts to everything that you can possibly cut. And so sometimes when you're in that, all you see is savings and debt payoff, savings and debt payoff. And to think, well, let me take some of this money and try to use some of it as seed money to create a business can be a tough thing for some people to stomach when you're in that debt freedom grind mode. So how did you all decide? And, and you talked about like some of the things didn't work out. So how did you all come to uh, an agreement? We're going to try this type of business. And it'll help us. 
and how are financially, how are we going to make this a reality? That is such a good question. Um, for us, it made sense because what we wanted to do, and I say this for anybody, you know, a lot of times people look outward for side hustles. It's like, I got to do this and I got to do that. And don't get me wrong. We side hustled. I'm talking about, we were, uh, we trained dogs. Uh, I started baking cupcakes and wedding cakes for folks. We made websites for people. I mean, we did, it, it, you name it, we did it. Um, we did jet ski tours. <laughs> you name it, we did it, okay? And the time came where it was like, um, I, the Ubers, and don't get me wrong, you Uber, you um, ride share and stuff like that, you can make good money doing that. But Sam was kind of like, hey, have you noticed that the side hustles that we do ourselves, like when I teach voice lessons, I get to set the hourly rate. And I get to, like, you have more control over it. You get more control of how much you're getting paid. You have more control of you getting in there and getting the customer. Um, and so we realized that when you kind of create a business for yourself, you you can earn more. And so that's where it started. Um, that's where that realization started. And then it was like, okay, we're in entertainment. We're in this world every day. We have relationships with people. We, you start to realize that you have the tools to do this thing, right? Uh, we've got the relationships. We've got the skill. We've got the know-how. And clearly, we're passionate about this. It just makes sense. Um, and so I would encourage folks to start with that as opposed to uh, you know, throwing out this crazy idea that seems like it's out of the blue you know, maybe, I mean, it's like if you're a nurse or you're in the healthcare field, it kind of feels weird that suddenly you're going to open up an art store, right? It's out of the blue. Whereas if you said, you know, I'm going to start a home healthcare deal and I'm going to get the people and I'm, that makes a lot more sense because you're in the field, you know, the, the people, you know, like, so start there. Um, and of course I say always, move with cash. We did not go into any debt for our business. We moved at the speed of cash. We moved slowly. We got one client at a time. Carnival was our very, Carnival Cruise Line was our very first client. We went very slowly with them and you just take it step by step and you'll start making a little bit of money. The first money that we made was like $700 and I thought we were kings. I was like, we just, we got a company to pay us $700. I couldn't believe it. And that was just the beginning, man. It was just the beginning. So um, yeah, just move slowly. Trust yourself. Invest in yourself. Um, you've probably got something that you could offer today that the world needs. Just throwing that out there. One more business question. You tried a couple of things that didn't work in the midst of this journey. It would be real easy to say, let's not do that again. Because that cost us money. That money could have went towards debt. We could have been out of debt two months sooner if we didn't try this whole business thing, but you tried something else that didn't work and try something else. And, ah, oh, this, but in, in the interim, before we got to it working, you had a lot of opportunities to say, forget this entrepreneurship thing. Let's just keep grinding the way we've been grinding. How did you keep getting back in the fight when it came to being a business owner and getting out of debt? Yeah, two things. I think it's a delicate balance because what you say is so true. Sometimes I pe see people just knocking their head against the wall. I'm like, this ain't it. Like, you need to move on. Like, this is not the business for you. And so um, just very clearly, the first business we had, we were we created um, a couple of entertainment acts and we were trying to sell them to different vendors and nobody was buying. We thought they were the best thing ever. I still think they were really good, but nobody wanted to buy them. And it was a failure. We spent a lot of money, a lot of time, um, failed. Then we said, oh, that was the wrong group. Let's create another one. That one failed too. So then it was like, hey, this is just not, we're in the right space entertainment, but we're not offering the right product. So then we figured out, hey, this is a product we need to offer. And then it started working. So I think there is a very clear, um, Henry Cloud talks about necessary endings. And sometimes you have to look at what's going on and you have to say, in order, it might be necessary for me to end this relationship or necessary for me to end this business ultimately so that I can get to where I need to go. Um, so there's a, 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 a balance between having, having faith and like, I can push through this and going, you know what, it might be time to wrap this version up and try a new version. And I'm a, I'm a very big 
big believer on this idea that nothing's wasted. I just where 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 I am now in life and can look back, it all played a part. None of it was wasted. I mean, yeah, I can say that business failed, but the the experience of it, what came from it was not a waste because it it provided um insight as to the next business venture and that provided insight to the next step. And I have the Sam and I both have this thing in life that we've just decided if there's a door or if there's a door of opportunity, we're going to turn the handle. We're going to turn the handle and we might open it up and there be a brick wall there. Okay, you can't go through that one. Or you turn the handle and you open it up and you walk through it and then you realize everybody on that side of the door is crazy. You go back out. <laughs> then you open the next door and you realize, oh, here it is. Like, this is the one. But there's something to be learned from all of that. And, you know, you, you don't get anywhere without walking forward. You got to keep walking. You got to keep trying knowing all along that all of this is going to work together um, for the good of, of, of your journey. So. Absolutely. Now that day came, sent that last payment, last due loan payment. After all that grind, all those hours, businesses that didn't work and finally a business that did and building that from the ground up, you sent in that payment. A lot of people are wondering what it feels like to know that you are completely deaf. I mean, we're talking about four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. When that, when you hit submit and you knew it was over, what was that feeling? October twenty fifth, twenty seventeen. Um, anytime I talk about it, I get choked up to this day because it is sacrifice, man, and it's a promise, and it's, it's just. There is such a um, power in knowing that if you set your mind to something, you can accomplish it. And I think in that moment, you just realize, man, I'm a freak. I'm freaking powerful. Like, I'm a boss. Don't. And, and anybody who told you different, they were they were dead wrong. And to to stand in that moment and go, man. Like you're, you're, you're able to walk through fire. Like you're able to walk through a journey. You're able to see it through to the other side. Nobody can take that away. No one. And that, that alone, yes, freedom feels great. Freedom is good. Financial freedom. Yeah. Right. But no one talks enough about what it builds inside of you that no one can take away. It's this well, man. Uh, any woman listening right now, if you've had a baby, you know, when you have a baby, can't, can't nobody tell me nothing after that, right? Like I had a baby. This is, the, this is that. This is, I paid off debt. Like this is like a primal rip your shirt roar that you do. And it, I will tell you on down the line, no matter what's come, come up against us, my husband and I, it's like, no, we can handle that. We handled that debt. We can handle this. Like it creates that well inside of you that you can pull from and draw from and get strength from. And that confidence that, hey, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out the plan. We'll figure out the steps. We'll figure out what we need to do. But we know that we're more than conquerors because we were able to pay this debt off. Come on, more than conquerors. I hear you preaching in here, Come Jay. On. I you, hear you. Look, I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love this. So now, what has life been like post that freedom for you and Sam? You all, as you all were going through, anybody that's gone through the journey, we we we, you know, we've been debt free for a while now, but we still remember just like the the resilience, but also the dreaming. We were doing a lot of dreaming uh -huh. about like we kept doing this because on the other side we're gonna be able to do X, Y, and Z, and can't nobody uh -huh. tell us nothing like you just said. <laughs> So talk about life post debt freedom. What have you and Sam been able to do after getting out of debt as a result of all the hard work that you put in to get out of debt? Well, of course, we've got a really nice savings account. You know, you build up, we always say three to six months of savings. Man, when you just have money sitting in the bank, it feels good. It feels like, come at me, like, come at me, bro. I'm ready. Uh, money saved in the bank. We bought our first house. Uh, back in 2018. Um, and it was great. It was, 
it was just the way we thought it would be because, you know, I'll be honest, I, I got on the Dave Ramsey tip and his whole thing is you pay off your debt, right? And your credit score drops to zero, but you can still buy a house with a zero credit score. Not going to lie. I was like, are you sure, Dave? Are, but are you sure though? Because I just got to make sure. And we did it. Bought a house with a zero credit score, got a great rate. Um, And since then we bought a second, uh, sold that one and bought a house here in Tennessee. And so home ownership, which we know is such a big component of building wealth, able to do that um, in the way that we wanted to do it. You know, um, I think sometimes people are so rushed to get into home ownership and they can't quite afford it and they don't end up getting, you know, what they would like to get. And then they're like, you know, it causes frustration. But when you're when you take your time and you're the tortoise and not the hare, the time will come and you can you'll have a clear mind and you'll get something that's a blessing and not a burden and you'll love it. Um, and so being able to have home ownership, we've had two kids since then. Um, they don't know about debt. They don't know what it is. I have to explain to them that my husband, my son, who's five, asked me, what is student loan debt? He heard, he heard my husband and I talking about, and he said, well, what is that? And I said, okay, let me explain it to you. So I told him and he was like, people get things that they can't afford. I was like, boy, every day it happens, (laughs) but we don't do that in this house. We only buy what we can afford. So it was a really cool teaching lesson. And we bought two cars in cash. I took, look, I I have not the oldest car. Let's see. We just bought a 2012 and I'm like, I love it. I don't, I, I, I know nothing of the riches of a 2022 or a 2023 vehicle. I am happy in that 2012 Yukon. We have a 2013 Cadillac. I, I, it's paid for. That's all I care about. And just living life, man. Not being, you know, and I want to say this. Back in 2008, 2009, Great Recession. It was hell. It was terrible. Everybody was losing jobs, losing houses, gas prices. And Sam and I were right smack dab in the middle of that madness with all that debt. Then COVID happens. And I remember, I remember saying back then, the next time there's like a huge, like bad government or bad economy, I, I want to fly above the radar. I don't even want to feel it. So when COVID came, financially, we were almost there. You know, we had gotten out of debt, but we we're still building up, you know, we had our savings and, but we were in entertainment. So everything went away for us. And we had such peace because we'd been working the steps that we were able to rise above that. And now with everything going on, it's like you, you want to be a spectator, right? That's the goal is that when the world's going crazy, inflation, egg prices, all this is going nuts. You're just sitting back in your home like, wow, that, that must suck, (laughs) right? That's what you want to be saying. And it's worth it to get to the point that you can do that. So let that be your goal. Say to yourself, look, in 10 years when uh the holograms are acting up and you know whatever the the major crisis is going to be, you're just going to be sitting back in your house debt free, you know, not thinking about it. Let everybody else scurry around and run around, but you did what was right. You did your thing and handled your business. Jay, listen man, you done walked us through an incredible journey, but there may be like a couple people that's like Man, I don't know if I can do I like shout out to Jay, shout out to Sam. But man, I don't know if my numbers and my situation and my set of circumstances is going to allow me to be able to go on this debt freedom journey. If you had a chance to talk to that person one on one, how would you encourage them? Um, The first thing that came to my mind is uh, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Whatever you think, you're going to be right. Because at the end of the day, whatever it is that you're looking for, that's what you find. If you look for reasons that you can't do it, baby, you will find stacks upon stacks of reasons that you can't. If you look for reasons that you can, you will also find that. And so it's really, a, but we boil back down to that mindset. And if nothing else encourages you, I I don't say this to be self-deprecating. I don't say this to be hard on myself, but I'm just telling y'all the real, real. There is nothing special about Jade Warshaw that is un, that is different from you. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I did not grow up in a wealthy household. We moved. You can sing. Though. I can sing. Now I will give you that. <laughs> if, if you can't sing, we might be a little bit different, but my point is 
it's just we're regular people. All of us are out here. We're just trying to make make it right. Um, didn't have a huge education, you know, lived in a small town with one stoplight. OK, black female. All of it. OK. Um, none of that's an excuse. You know, math doesn't have any feelings. Math is not, you know, for black people or for white people or for, you know, it, it's just numbers. And, and we have the ability to take control of our situation at the end of the day and make real changes and take real strides forward. And the more that you just start and you feel like, oh, wow, like I was able to pay off that $300 card. What else can I do? Just start and you'll start to see little by little, just take one step at a time. You are going to make progress. But the key to making progress is you got to make the progress instead of making the excuses. Come on, make progress. Stop making excuses is what she just told y'all. Jay, how can people keep up with you on these interwebs if they want to stay connected with you? Yes, please follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. But if you really want to get the real me, Instagram, uh, Jade Warshaw is the name. And just uh, check out the the Ramsey show. Um, you can listen to it wherever podcasts are. Um, it's on YouTube, big on YouTube where you can see the video and everything. So I love the YouTube version, but man, we're, we chop it up. We talk about all sorts of circumstances and you can call in if you have a question. So, and, and just stay connected to folks who are doing exactly what it is that you want to do. Jade Warshaw, everybody. Jade, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come by the His and Her Money Show and share all this great info and insight with us today. Thank you for having me. This was a great joy. Thanks for having me, Talit. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another edition of the His and Her Money Show is in the books. I told you to get ready that you were going to be inspired by Jade's story, and I know that you were, but guess what? Inspiration by itself is not enough. We need you to take what you heard today, do the work, the steps that she outlined. Maybe you can implement something similar and maybe you can do what she did. You can become debt free. I don't think you can do it. I know you can. If you're willing to do the work, make the sacrifices and stay consistent, you too can achieve all of your financial goals as well. Remember, we've got plenty of insight and education just like this over at our website, hisandhermoney.com. That's all we got for this time, guys. It's been great. Till next time. Peace.